Paso, Texas is seeing one of the worst COVID surges in the country right now. Late last night, the county judge there ordered another curfew that will last through this holiday weekend. The number of cases so high that mobile morgues have been ordered. Inmates are helping to transfer bodies in El Paso. And as you might imagine, it's all taking a tremendous toll on healthcare workers there. Ashley Bartholomew is a former operating room nurse who was redeployed to the ICU and the OR closed down. She was caring for some of the sickest patients and recently had to make the very difficult decision to quit her job as a nurse. Uh, and Ashley Bartholomew, she joins me now. And Ashley, you, you wrote on Twitter about this conversation with the patient who thought COVID was nothing more than a, than a flu and, and thought some of the coverage about it was fake news. And you wrote, quote, and it's a lengthy quote. I want, I want to read it for our viewers and our listeners on Sirius Satellite Radio because it really does capture um, the sentiment. I make a choice, something I've never done. I say, to be honest, this is my last shift. You're the only patient of 25 that has been able to speak to me today or is even aware I'm here. He's surprised but doubtful and asks, if other people are doing as well as him. I tell him, I've never seen so many people so very sick. He asks if a lot of people have died. I'm brutally honest. I tell him in 10 years of being a nurse, I've done more CPR and seen more people die in the last two weeks than I have in my entire career combined. What, what made you want to share that candid assessment, Ashley? Um, you know, just... I was so shocked in the moment when he was saying this to me. Um, it was truly shocking. Um, like I said in the thread, uh, here I was basically wrapped in a tarp is what I say. Um, and he's in a COVID ICU and he's still kind of denying the severity of the situation. This particular moment that you shared was, was your, your breaking point. What was it about this moment? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say that it was my breaking point. Um, I had actually planned to resign where a military family and will be relocating. Um, and I actually stayed a couple more weeks to help specifically in the, co in the COVID ICU. Um, but this moment was just, it showed me the power of denial and how misinformation and disinformation is killing us. Um, and, and it made me... Um, you know, not nervous for not only this one patient, if he's thinking like this, there's potentially thousands or millions more. And um, and we're in trouble if, if that if that's the case. But, but these, these folks who are in disbelief as you are helping them or trying to help them heal, how would they explain their own symptoms? How, how are they explaining what they were themselves dealing with in the hospital? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure, um, other than what he kind of explained to me that, you know, he felt like it was just really not more than a flu. Um, and, uh, and, and I think kind of when I, I showed him, um, or, you know, explained to him just how horrible the previous two weeks had been for me and, um, you know, just met him on kind of like a human level, um, I think he started to really realize that, you know, how severe everything was. You think it set in with him. What, what happened to him? Is he, is he better? Is he out? Um, so I had the opportunity to transfer him to a lower level of care. He's being transferred out of the ICU. And, um, you know, that's when he kind of said, when he saw all the other patients and kind of the busyness of the unit, um, he, he told me, no, I was mistaken. This, this is a lot more than just a flu. Um, I didn't realize that I was kind of the exception. Um, and so I wished him well. And, um, you know, and nurses and healthcare providers, um, we're, we're tired. You know, we have family of our own that we're trying to protect, protect and the work and the hours and um, the acuity of the patients. Um, it's grueling, tiring work. Um, and so, you know, do what we can to, to help us, help you. It's taken a toll. I can only imagine. It's it's had to have taken quite the toll mentally and emotionally on on so many um, nurses and doctors in this country over the, over the last nine months. Do you think you'll get back into the 
into the profession once you move? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I have had a lifetime of service. Uh, I love being a nurse. Um, I'll, I plan to you know, do graduate school at some point. And um, after we move and get settled and get the kids settled, um, I'll, I'll definitely jump back in and be at the bedside. Not to put you on the spot here, but, you know, we've, we've been covering this now for, you know, the better part of, of eight months, nine months now, I think, at least. Um, is, is there anything else that, that journalists, media can, can do to, to help folks understand the severity of COVID? I mean, I think, uh, like, thankfully, you know, the media seems to be doing, uh, doing a good job, like, exactly what you're doing. Um, it's hard, though, when we have these mixed messages from a national level um, down to a state level, and then even here in El Paso at the local level, um, you know, those type of mixed messages um, get mixed results. And yeah. unfortunately, in healthcare and in a pandemic, that means more sickness and more dying. And, um, and that's frustrating for us. And we need to get hold of that so that we're all on board for a vaccine and, and we don't run into these same types of problems when we have you know, our one glimmer of hope. And it probably doesn't help that you got a bunch of folks reading a bunch of wacky stuff on the internet and, and sharing all yeah. that nonsense too. <laughs> Ashley Bartholomew, Ashley, thank you for your service. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Thank you so much. And a happy Thanksgiving uh, to all of you watching and listening. Andrew Mitchell Reports is going to start after a quick break. Her special guest today, Admiral Brett Girard, Assistant Secretary for Health. And